Hi everyone, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, I hope you are all doing well today and uh, my name is Meghla Ramesh. Today, uh, Lex and I are thrilled to be your webinar speaker. So before we dive into our topic, uh, explore how Bestock 360 empowers companies in healthcare, manufacturing, energy and utilities, retail and logistics. I would like to extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you. This webinar is a unique opportunity for us to come together and explore the transformative power of Bestock 360 in different industries. So we highly encourage your active participation throughout the session. To ask questions, please use the designated Q&A feature in the webinar platform. Our team will address as many questions as possible during the dedicated Q&A session at the end. If you are unable to attend the entire webinar, don't worry. The session will be recorded and a replay link will be provided to all registered attendees via email. So this way you can revisit the content at your convenience or share it with your colleagues who may have missed the live session. Lastly, if you encounter any technical issues or require assistance during the webinar, our technical support team is here to help you. Simply reach out to them for prompt assistance. So thank you for your attention to these housekeeping details. We hope uh, they contribute to a seamless and enjoyable webinar experience for all. Now let's get started. So already we are in agenda. Uh, like uh, in today's session, we will explore how Bestock 360 has made a significant impact across multiple industries. So we will discuss real world examples and success stories, highlight the role of Bestock 360 in streamlining business processes and enhancing operational efficiency. And also like uh, let's dive into the core features of Bestock 360. We will explore how it provides end-to-end -end monitoring, management, and analytics for your Bestock server environment. So, from its intuitive user interface to advanced features, so you can we can see everything in action today. And also, understanding the financial impact of downtime is crucial for any business. So, we will delve into the cost associated with the integra integration downtime and how Bestock 360 helps minimize these costs. Learn how proactive monitoring, alerting, and automated recovery mechanism offered by Bestock 360 can significantly reduce downtime. And also, uh, as a product based organization we are continually evolving to meet the changes needs of business so in this section we will provide a walkthrough of the exciting features introduced in the latest version of Bestock 360 and discover how these new features can further enhance your in integration challenges and finally Q&A session next okay so he, these are all the industries which uh, we are going to look into today like uh, how what is the major business problem each and every industries would face and how best of 360 will be a really a helpful tool for them in order to address their integration challenges next so in this uh, slide we have highlighted uh, the major business problem each and every industry would face uh, like let's start from the healthcare industry so first of all like maintaining patient data privacy and security is of utmost importance to them so with the increasing digitization of healthcare records uh, it becomes crucial to ensure that sensitive patients information remains protected so that is a very important uh, challenge where businesses would look uh, uh, would look and also in healthcare workflows you know efficiency and accuracy are key factors optimizing uh, healthcare workflows uh, helps in improving patient care reducing delays of information uh, flow and also increasing operational efficiency so if there is any exception so it is very important to address this, uh, address it immediately uh, in their uh, business flow and coming to the manufacturing industry you know real time supply chain I believe we have lost Mekla for a minute. Let me, well, let's give her a couple of seconds before she uh, she returns, and otherwise I'll uh, I'll take over. 
We left off at, uh, at manufacturing. Yeah, there you are again. Yeah, yeah. we lost you for a second. Um, uh, yeah. Nicola. Yeah, Alex, I'm back. Yeah. So right from uh, the raw material components and uh, until it gets as a finished goods. So getting insights into the status of shipments, delivery timelines and potential disruption is very difficult also in that industry. In the, in the energy and utilities industry, so managing distribution system is very crucial for business to ensuring reliable and un uninterrupted supply to consume consumers. Uh, and also the other problem is optimizing their resources, resource usage. It's very crucial for energy and uh, utilities companies to enhance their opera operational efficiency and uh, reduce uh, cost, So, which is specifically for the system resources. Coming to the retail industry, you know, monitoring their sales and customer trends is crucial for staying competitive and meeting customer demands. Uh, retailers can gather and analyze real-time sales data from various channels such as online platform or physical stores and mobile applications. And also the second thing is demand forca forecasting is also a critical aspect of retail operations. In today's omnichannel retail landscape, seamless integration between channels is essential for providing a unified and consistent customer experience. If there is any problem in that, then you know there is a major business interruption will happen. Coming to the logistic industry, in the first thing is uh, tracking and managing goods in the supply chain is essential for ensuring smooth and efficient operations. Real-time visibility into their inventory level, shipping status and delivery milestones. Those are all the very crucial KPI for them. And also the second, uh, the other one is efficient inventory management is also a crucial for logistic companies. So like these are all the main challenges we have identified and um, low, uh, in this uh, slide uh, we will we will be seeing like how these challenges has been addressed in bestock 360 uh, you know like uh, these challenges mainly like data driven decision making uh, you know you wanted to know like how the data is flowing from your inbound to outbound uh, that uh, you can uh, get that insight through Bistock 360's data monitoring capability. So that would give you the real-time insights into the flow of data within Bistock environments. Users can configure thresholds and alerts based on message count, size and processing time to proactively monitor and address issues. So this ensures timely detection of potential bottlenecks and enables efficient troubleshooting. Uh, with comprehensive visibility and proactive uh, monitoring, organizations can maintain optimal performance of their business and also the data integrity in their business environments. Coming to the next problem, proactive issues, issue detection. You know, like if any business, so identifying issues, uh, you know, proactively and solving it can be a big, uh, uh, can be a big uh, time saver, and uh, it will it will actually save lot lot lots of their time and as well as the business. Uh, with that, you know, Bistock 360 provides automation capabilities. So this capabilities uh, empowers organization to stream, streamline and optimize their Bistock environment management processes. With features like automated tasks, auto healing and automated operations of service instances, business can automate their routine tasks, reduce manual effort and improve operational efficiency and monitor complex message flows. So the next comes to like performance optimization. So as everyone know, like Bustock is a black box. Uh, if you wanted to know like how your Bustock platform is uh, performing, so you need to rely on the on the performance. And also with Bustock 360 analytics capability, you can get deeper insights into your Bustock environment through advanced analytics and leverage comprehensive reports and visualizations to understand trends, identify bottlenecks, and optimize the performance of your bus stock environment. And the next comes, you know, security and risk mitigation. This is a 
major component every business needed so with the bestock 360s user management uh, you know uh, you can achieve that uh, achieve that uh, can achieve that so in every business uh, it is essential to manage Oh, it looks like we miss Megla again. Again, let's give her a couple of seconds. Yeah, yeah. there she Sorry, you will be getting an enhanced customer experience and also with the integration of BAM, EDI, BRE, you will be, you can track key performance, uh, key KPIs of your, important KPIs of your um, business. Next. You know, uh, Bestock 360 uh, is a unified platform that combines administration, monitoring, and analytics functionalities of Microsoft Bestock Server. And also, like with the admin capability, you can enhance the efficiency and productivity of Bestock administrators. With its intuitive interface and powerful tools integrated together, you can streamline your administrative administrative tasks, such as like managing applications, artifacts, configuring host and host instances, and handling artifacts. Experience you can experience a seamless administration process that saves you time and effort. Coming to the monitoring, monitoring is completely uh, out, uh, out of the box capability um, of Bestock 360 of Bestock Server, so which simplifies Bestock Server monitoring, providing complete coverage of your monitoring needs, and also uh, you can effortlessly monitor the health and performance of your Bestock environment, and you will be you can receive like real time alerts, track message processing, and gain insights into your key metrics. So, and also uh, with the analytics, as I said previously, you will be getting all the insights of your Bestock environment. So, this is a brief of all Bestock 360. Now, let's now explore uh, how Bestock 360 is being used in different uh, industries, and we will be having uh, case studies uh, of e uh, in each area in upcoming slides. So, which will hel help you to understand like what was their business problem, and after deploying Bestock 360, how uh, their business pro pro problem uh, has been fulfilled, and how Bestock 360 is effective actively used in their environment. So this is a Swedish uh, medical uh, agency. They are our, uh, um, uh, you know, customer. Um, they have been using Bistock 360 for a long time. So this is the this is one of their feedback. Like after employing Bistock 360. Um, they are like uh, really get to know about what is happening in their best stock environment if anything happens then they will be receiving an alert immediately to take it uh, further for uh, um, further for you know analyze it and solve it so next next yeah so these are these were these were the key challenges they have faced you know initially um, they will not be get, they will not be having an uh, you know, um, any uh, insight or into their Bistock environment, what's happening. Then after implementing Bistock 360, they have experienced remarkable improvements in their Bistock environment. Uh, you know, with its precise monitoring capabilities, they significantly reduce, you know, the they are significantly reduced their manual tasks and efforts and prevented receiving false alarms by saving valuable time and effort. And also with the user face, with the user interface of Bistock 360, uh, you know the latest version um, that is offering a seamless and positive experience for them. They found it easy to navigate and customize alarms specific to their Bistock sub Bistock applications. And they 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 you know there were two standout features of Bistock 360 uh, that uh, the specific customer found particularly beneficial. So one is data monitoring. So that would have, that is helping them closely monitor their specific data points such as message processing for a particular batch. 
with minimal manual intervention. The other beneficial feature uh, is automated tasks. So with the automation capabilities, so they are streamlining their uh, uh, repetitive processes such as server maintenances and application deployment and uh, so which resulted in time and energy saving for them. So yeah, over to yeah. you Lex. Next, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nidia, well, uh, also uh, take a couple of those um, uh, case studies. Uh, yeah, an another customer that uh, that you have is uh, Gabritz uh, from uh, from Switzerland. They are big in uh, center products. Uh, yeah, really like a, a global player. Uh, they are also uh, yeah our customer quite for quite some time. Uh, meanwhile, uh, well here you can also uh, here see their feedback. Uh, so they can't recommend Pistol 360 enough. Uh, yeah, and the support that comes with your product. Uh, yeah, to anybody uh, who needs to manage a biz talk environment of any size, uh, actually. Uh, so, key challenges they faced uh, dealt with uh, well, centralized monitoring that they didn't have before Biz360, uh, and also an ease to use for a tool uh, for people that are not familiar with familiar with the concepts of uh, of Biz Talk Server. Uh, that were without uh, having a monitoring product like Visual 360, of course, no notification capabilities uh, would be available, uh, and also no monitoring uh, for actual uh, endpoints uh, like uh, message queues, uh, API endpoints, uh, file shares, FTP sites, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, clearly, you understand that uh, after they introduced uh, Visual 360, all those capabilities uh, were available. Uh, so they were able uh, to monitor uh, the whole BizTalk environment. So not just uh, the BizTalk components like the receive locations, the send ports, the host instances, and so on, uh, but also uh, uh, backend stuff uh, like uh, SQL Server jobs, uh, all kinds of endpoints. Uh, yeah, that can all be done uh, with uh, BizTalk 360. Uh, and on top of that, uh, receive notifications that are generated when something unexpected happens uh, via the channels uh, that are most convenient to them, uh, like email, Microsoft Teams, having tickets created in ServiceNow, uh, and so on. Uh, also, there, were the, there are those uh, customizable uh, dashboards that, that can be used, uh, so each user uh, that is given access to the product can create their own uh, uh, dashboards, uh, yeah, depending on the role they have with respect to uh, the support of the BizTalk uh, environment, they can simply create their own uh, dashboards, uh, yeah, again, for their own uses. Uh, and also, that integrated monitoring is, uh, is there uh, for indeed the message queues, the API endpoints, uh, and so on. Another customer that, that we have is, uh, is uh, Nicholas and Company, and they are uh, clearly in uh, food and beverage uh, services. Uh, so, uh, yeah, their feedback is that uh, for them, Bistro 360 is the best lightweight solution to monitor the Bistro environment uh, without much of a, of a, of a learning curve. Uh, key challenges they faced is that they were not being aware of, of ports uh, being down, uh, like receive locations that could not connect any longer, or at least for some time, uh, to the to the endpoint. Yeah, that can lead uh, to the actual receive location going down, and there's not much notice. Uh, uh, there's no notification, no alarms if you're not using a, a monitoring product. Uh, so, well, that is very important information to be aware of, of course, um, because clearly, you know, message, messages will be picked up when received locations would be would be down. Um, also, similar to Gabbard, uh, there are no notifications uh, when, for example, uh, messages uh, are, are failing. Uh, yeah, so messages could not be processed uh, completely uh, because maybe some uh, some formatting uh, issue uh, or uh, wrong data that was not expected by this talk uh, that led to uh, messages get, get getting suspended and clearly also there is uh, a lot of manual monitoring that uh, that must be done again without a monitoring product uh, like being aware indeed if there are any failed messages of course also if if the, all the ports are properly uh, uh, yeah, in the in the enabled state, and the same applies to the other ports, of course. Um, 
but also if the, the platform is, is still healthy, uh, if all the SQL jobs are running properly, if um, uh, well, all, all the batches uh, are being processed uh, properly, uh, well, as one, there are yeah, many more scenarios that you can think of. Uh, after they introduced uh, BISTOR 360, uh, what well, they mentioned that the product is a great monitoring tool, uh, including automated recovery and, uh, and retry. Uh, so we will uh, retry tooling. So that is one of the features that's, that, that we bring. Uh, if a report would go down, uh, BISTOR 360 uh, yeah, will be aware of it uh, once a monitoring has been set up. Uh, and so you will start receiving notifications. But besides that, uh, BISTOR 360 can also try to automatically uh, bring those ports uh, back to their expected state and thereby reducing down downtime and also uh, reducing manual labor. Um, that, uh, so that's the so-called uh, autocorrect me mechanism. But besides that, so that really deals with uh, yeah, all kinds of, of, of ports and other artifacts uh, that might be in a, in a stop state while they uh, should be uh, running, of course. Uh, so there's the retry mechanism uh, for the for, for for those for those ports and so on, uh, but besides that, uh, we, it's also possible to monitor uh, whether there are suspended instances, and maybe they are happening simply because BizTalk can't connect uh, to a um, to a, an endpoint to where messages must be uh, submitted. Uh, if that is only a temporary issue because of something unexpected happens in the network. Uh, BISTOR 360 you will be able to automatically resume those instances. Uh, so again, uh, besides that it supports the actual flow of messages, um, there will be less manual labor uh, to do for all that, uh, all that processing. Um, yeah, so that was a little bit about uh, Nicholson Company. And uh, then we have this uh, logistics uh, company, uh, OIA uh, Global. And, uh, well, yeah, their feedback is uh, as a user of BISTOR 360, we don't have to worry about starting uh, BISTOR artifacts manually uh, because the product will do it uh, for us uh, if necessary. So here as well, if something goes down in their environment, BISTOR 360 will be aware of it. Uh, and the product will automatically uh, try at least uh, to restart those uh, those those ports. So their key challenges uh, uh, were about the absence of monitoring uh, for message transaction. So again, that's something what we've seen uh, with Nicholas and company as well. Uh, that there is the ability to monitor uh, whether there are uh, any suspended instances, uh, and if so, well, well, there can be an automated uh, resume uh, action performed. Um, queued files that are not being picked up. So if you are uh, relying on uh, using uh, FTP sites or file shares or message queues uh, or web endpoints, and um, if files are not being uh, picked up uh, properly from those locations, that will be an interruption of your business process. Uh, so with BISTOR 360, you will be made aware uh, of that kind of interruptions um, by, yeah, by just sending you notifications about that, that uh, situation to happen. Uh, and here as well, the state of the applications in, in this case, uh, in, in, in this case, uh, their production uh, environment. So indeed, again, if ports are not in their expected state, BISTOR 360 will be made, will be aware of it. Uh, so you will start uh, to receive notifications, uh, and if required, Bistro can uh, 360 can start the sports again automatically. Uh, so clearly, uh, after Bistro 360, uh, there is an auto start of applications and underlying uh, artifacts uh, to catch potential issues early and improve the overall efficiency uh, and availability of the of the platform and uh, and the integrations. And of course, yeah, uh, well. There are those alarms that can be set to monitor those applications. And it, it is not just about receiving notifications when something unexpected has happened, um, but you can also receive so-called uh, health alarms, uh, which uh, 
can be seen as a kind of daily reports. So once you arrive at your desk as a BizTalk administrator, uh, the first thing that you uh, might want to do, uh, after picking up a cup of coffee, of course, uh, is that you uh, are going to check the BizTalk environment. Uh, are all my ports uh, running? Uh, are all my host instances running? Uh, are, all, are there any suspended instances? And then you start to perform all kinds of different uh, checks. Uh, if you have to do that yourself manually, well, that can easily well, take uh, well, some, some, some time, right? Uh, and the thing is, this kind of checks, you have to do it multiple times per day uh, to be aware of uh, the well-being of that environment. And by using those health alarms, you can schedule when you want to receive an update uh, of the well-being of all those components that are being monitored. So instead, you uh, doing all those checks manually, BISTO 360 uh, yeah, can perform those actions uh, for you. And you will simply receive a report uh, which has the information about uh, all those the health information about all those different components. Next, the last uh, case study we have here uh, that uh, this has they are in a utility. Um, so <clears throat> their feedback is uh, that BISO 360 uh, for them is the best product for monitoring your BISO environment uh, because it doesn't require to stick to the admin console. Uh, yeah, all the time for all the different uh, operations. Uh, and clearly, uh, to be able to uh, properly uh, be aware uh, of the well being of the BISOC environment, you need more than just the administration console. And that's also what you'll see uh, in, the, in the demo of, of BISOC 360. Uh, yeah, well, that with BISO 360, you will have access uh, to multiple different consoles that are relevant for you as a BISTOC administrator to be aware uh, of the well-being of the complete environment and not just what's happening in the actual BISTOC admin console. Key challenges they face is also about the manual monitoring that must be done uh, with the applications without a monitoring solution, time consuming monitoring and operations. And uh, there was uh, not a good overview of the complete BizTalk uh, server environment. Uh, after HES has introduced uh, BizTalk 360, there were those monitoring capabilities uh, for BizTalk applications and, of course, much more. Um, but it is also uh, possible. Um, to check uh, for, for any errors that have happened in, in any area uh, related to BISTOL and then take any appropriate actions. Well, I think those were the, the case studies. Uh, now let's have a look at uh, the actual product. Uh, so let me take this, uh, this browser. So here we have a, a BISTOL 360. Uh, this is what we call the so-called uh, landing page. And what you see here is three different BizTalk environments. So from one uh, installation of BizTalk 360, uh, you can uh, operate and monitor multiple uh, different BizTalk environments. Um, yeah, as long as you provide the proper details about uh, where the BizTalk environment details can be found, what databases and so on. Uh, well, that environment, those environments can just be can just be added. So the overview, uh, this, this landing page already contains some uh, information, yeah, interesting information about what's happening uh, within that, uh, that information in, in environment. Uh, but of course, uh, much more can be explored here in the actual uh, 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 landing page uh, for this uh, specific uh, environment. Uh, so you will focus on uh, a couple of uh, the challenges that we've seen uh, based on those uh, case studies, uh, like what we've seen a couple of times that people were looking for a user interface, uh, yeah, that's intuitive, uh, that's easy to use, and uh, that it uh, simply makes it easier uh, to get to the information that they require, uh, yeah, to be aware of the BizTalk uh, server environment uh, well-being. 
Um, here we are on the administration side. Here you can see BizTalk is BizTalk 360 is segregated in three different sections: administration, monitoring, and uh, analytics. And that administration side side section has uh, many uh, features and screens um, for you again to give that that insight. So there are features uh, that come, for example. Uh, from the, the BizTalk admin console, uh, like here, the ability to access your uh, BizTalk C60 applications, uh, including, of course, uh, the underlying uh, uh, artifacts. Um, so from here, you can uh, stop and start all the ports uh, and so on, uh, and also get details about uh, the actual uh, artifacts. Uh, so yeah, let's take this uh, C application. So currently it is disabled. Uh, of course, it can be enabled if you would have the proper permissions. Uh, you can view all the details uh, about this uh, very uh, receive location. Uh, the name is receive port, what pipeline is used, uh, including the details about the actual uh, pipeline components. Uh, so everything is there. Uh, everything that's there in the admin console, we also show it up uh, here. Uh, again, including the ability to stop and start uh, those uh, all those different uh, components. Uh, so here you have the main uh, components, uh, but here of artifacts, I must I should better say, uh, here you can access uh, the other ones as, uh, as well. Uh, again, just like how it shows up in the administration console, uh, there's an easy way to search for artifacts across uh, BizTalk applications. So this is kind of a query interface. Uh, from where you can uh, search for uh, well all the different artifacts. Uh, well, let's just take this one. You can provide additional filters, uh, and here as well you can provide additional filters. Uh, receive location, yeah, here is it. Uh, like for example, uh, filters of, for the application name, the status of the received location that you're looking for, the host name that's being used, the transport type, uh, that's uh, that's all possible. So if I want to see all the received locations across the BizTalk group uh, that are using the FTP uh, adapter, uh, I can query like this. And <laughs> in this case, there's uh, not that much, uh, which surprised me a little bit, but well, so be it. Uh, let's just change it to file then, yeah. Yeah, so here there's a, yeah, plenty of received locations. Um, the main message is here is that this uh, search artifact feature allows you to search for artifacts across uh, BizTalk applications. Uh, yeah, just to make it easy. Um, other features uh, are about uh, the mesh box queries, of course, that are very important to be aware of. Uh, so you have a query interface. Again, uh, with uh, with filtering capabilities, uh, like very similar to how it looks like in the BizTalk admin console. But here we have added, uh, yeah, some some stuff. Uh, for example, uh, you can give people uh, read-only access, so only the ability uh, to query against uh, BizTalk uh, applications. Sorry, BizTalk uh, service instances. Uh, without the ability uh, to uh, resume and uh, suspend ter or, or terminate uh, service instances. In this case here, I am the, um, the super user, uh, so uh, I will have all the access anyway. Uh, but if you want to give some support uh, a person access uh, to BizTalk 360 who might be not uh, aware of all the concepts in, um, in BizTalk 360, uh, and not be aware of all of the concepts of BizTalk Server, um, you can set up a profile uh, that mm. is uh, that only provides limited access uh, to that um, to all the different features, and that can include, for example, not providing the ability to uh, resume, suspend, or terminate a service instances. So that's something that we have done. You can also prevent people uh, from view viewing message content. And another uh, thing that we have done is here, here you have those booklet icons. Uh, so uh, as you can see from a tooltip, uh, yeah, those tooltips, uh, those knowledge, those, those, that booklet icon refers to uh, knowledge-based articles. So if I would click on this 
service properties uh, button, uh, you can get all the details uh, from this actual service instance, including uh, the actual messages with the message content. And here we have this message viewer a little bit more friendly uh, compared to this, the Bizoc admin console, including a search capability. Uh, but as you could see, when I go back to the previous page, there is also a type page for a knowledge base article. Uh, so in this case, for this service instance, a knowledge base article showed up uh, that gives some information about what's the actual problem uh, that was happening there and how it should be, uh, uh, yeah, how it should be solved. This is of course very basic. You do have to create those knowledge base articles yourself. Uh, but well, yeah, that can clearly be very helpful uh, for, for support people. Yeah, tracking queries. This is about the queries uh, from, uh, yeah, based on tracked uh, information. Uh, there's the BAM portal that we have integrated in Vistar 360, the ESB portal, and as you can see, there's, there's so much more. Uh, there's a tracking manager, uh, so that makes it much easier uh, to be aware of all the tracking settings uh, within all the different BizTalk applications and all the, on, all the underlying uh, artifacts. Uh, at least much easier, again, compared to how it's done in the BizTalk admin uh, console. That's there. Uh, and as you can see, there's, there's so much more. You can run SQL queries. Uh, you can uh, view event log entries. Uh, from all the different uh, servers uh, that are part of your BizTalk uh, group and query them uh, just from, from here. Uh, you can also uh, uh, query against uh, Perfman encounters. Uh, well, uh, and the list goes, uh, goes on and on. Uh, and as I said, uh, everything is protected uh, with those uh, user access policies. So again, here I am a BizTalk, uh, I have a, I'm a super user, so a BizTalk admin uh, kind of, uh, of role. But uh, if I would have, for example, a colleague named, uh, named Claire uh, here in this, uh, in this profile, she, uh, she shows up here. She is, uh, well, uh, not that familiar uh, with, uh, with BizTalk server, uh, but still, uh, yeah, we can give her some uh, appropriate uh, access to BizTalk 360. So if we do that, uh, of course, I can show that better here on the other side. If I would go to that homepage, the settings, and then to team management, here I have that user, Claire, so I can show her profile. You have here her details, her login details. We can give her access to only a subset of the available uh, BizTalk applications. And besides that, you can also give her only limited access uh, to specific uh, features. So she will have access to the mesh box queries uh, and some, some other features. Uh, but because she is not a BizTalk administrator, uh, yeah, the infrastructure features are not relevant for her. So we just don't give her that access. Uh, SQL server queries, well, yeah, she can run some uh, queries that might have been prepared for her. So she can just uh, execute them. But here, as you can also see, well, she won't be able to stop start host instances, for example, or she won't be able to stop start uh, ports in BizTalk applications. Uh, she also won't be able to uh, suspend, uh, resume, terminate service instances. Uh, yeah, clearly, we can we have limited her access uh, within that uh, within the environment. Uh, and again, uh, this is how it would uh, show up uh, here for her. Here on the left side, you, as you can see, there's no monitoring, there's no, no analytics. Uh, so clearly, this is a subset of everything that uh, would be available, uh, yeah, for 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 others. Uh, but for her, she can work with uh, with this. Uh, she can access those applications uh, also via the search artifacts. Uh, she can run those measure box queries. Um, also, the output here uh, is only related to the business applications uh, that she is allowed to access. 
uh, she can run those tracking queries to understand if everything runs properly. She can access the, the ESB portal uh, maybe to um, to fix some messages or at least view some messages. Uh, well, and so on, and so on. Yeah, so that's uh, that's all there. Uh, well, then we have uh, so that's really about that um, um, the, the user interface and and how you can limit access. Uh, to a specific user, but also a little bit about how we have uh, improved uh, specific experiences from other tools, uh, yeah, and how we have done it here in Visual 360, like again, of course, the user access, uh, but also, for example, that user, um, uh, what it, sorry, that, 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 that knowledge base, uh, we just want to make it, uh, yeah, our customers a little bit easier, uh, of course, with, uh, with Visual 360. Then uh, let's go back to that environment here, back to the environment, manage environment, uh, monitoring. That was also one of the challenges that uh, that we've seen across uh, most of the of the the customers from those uh, those case studies. Uh, that yeah, they lack a good monitoring solution, and manual monitoring takes a lot of time. Uh, so clearly, monitoring is uh, one of the biggest features in Bistro 360. Um, so what you can do, uh, you can uh, create multiple alarms and also segregate those alarms. Uh, for example, you can create an alarm uh, just for uh, monitoring the actual platform. So that is uh, about Bistock servers and the event logs and monitoring your host instances. Uh, monitoring uh, if any throttling is taking place, monitoring against specific database queries that are a bit more, uh, what is it, um, platform related. You can even monitor against EDI uh, agreements, well, and so on. Uh, you, you can monitor against business server availability. You can monitor against the, the SQL jobs, uh, whether they are all started properly, like is your BizTalk backup uh, running properly? Um, that's, that's all that kind of stuff that can be set up in BizTalk 360. You can create a separate alarm for it. Uh, and then once anything unexpected happens, you can start receiving notifications via the channels that work the best for you. That can be email, uh, but you can also have a ticket created in ServiceNow, for example, if that uh, would be your, tic your, your ticketing uh, system. Um, and the same applies for uh, uh, monitoring your business applications, uh, of course, when we go back to the dashboard. Here we have the alarm that has been created uh, for a specific uh, business application. And as you can see, yeah, there's that tree view uh, that shows where anything is wrong. Uh, so the send ports, they are all healthy, so probably they should all be in a starter state, uh, but something's yeah. wrong with a receive location. So that's probably in the disabled state. And there are also some service instances that probably got uh, suspended. Uh, so if you want to understand uh, what's actually uh, happening there, you can view the actual configuration, how it has been set up. Uh, so you can view uh, that um, Visual C60 is monitoring for suspended resumable instances, and that there are currently 18 uh, suspended uh, instances, uh, while the threshold has been have been configured as uh, zero for a warning threshold and five for an error threshold. And clearly that error threshold has been exceeded uh, by that 18 uh, uh, current uh, suspended resumable. Suspended resumable instances, hence you will start receiving those, uh, those notifications. So, so all those dashboards are there. They can also be uh, very handy uh, to have them on a uh, on a big screen at your uh, 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 support desk, uh, for example. So besides receiving the notifications, you will also have that visual uh, understanding about the well-being of that uh, complete uh, environment. Um, next, with respect to uh, what all can be monitored, there's just so much. Uh, of course, you can monitor against the BizTalk applications. Uh, so let's have a look at this one, uh, for example. Um, the BizTalk applications and their uh, underlying uh, BizTalk artifacts, uh, like your receive locations and your send port. Uh, suspended service instances, we've seen it already. As you can see, you can monitor against all the different statuses. 
uh, this application doesn't have any orchestrations, uh, but there is uh, one receive location. And uh, well, the expected state uh, for this receive location is disabled. Uh, and also uh, currently it is in that uh, disabled state. So this situation is healthy. Uh, so that also means that you can't monitor just against uh, the, the active state, so whether it is if it is enabled in this case, but you can also monitor against yeah, non-active states like indeed uh, disabled here. Um, if that monitoring has been configured like this, additionally, you can also set up uh, that autocorrect capability. So that would automate um, unexpected uh, situations to happen. So if somebody uh, accidentally turns on this receive location, uh, which is not the state we want it to be in, Bistox 360 will be made aware of it yeah, by, uh, as a result of this monitoring rule. And then by enabling that autocorrect, let's see what happens. Yeah, there has been set up somewhere else already. So we will simply ignore this, ignore this one, this message. And now that that autocorrect has been set up uh, for, this, uh, for this rule. So if somebody uh, enables this uh, receive location, it will automatically uh, be disabled again. And clearly it was also the other way around. So if it got disabled because it can't connect to its endpoint anymore, uh, Bistro 60 will automatically enable it. Uh, and uh, again, yeah, just improve the availability of the environment. And this autocorrect feature that works not just uh, for receive applications, but of course also for all the other uh, BizTalk artifacts, uh, but also for host instances, uh, Windows NT services, SQL jobs, uh, and Azure Logic Apps. Yeah, and as you can see, there's so much more, right? Uh, you can monitor your Azure services if you are using them, uh, like your Logic Apps, your API Apps, your service bus queues and your topics, uh, stuff within your BizTalk environment, We've seen a bit already, like your host instances. Uh, you can monitor host throttling. You can monitor web endpoints, uh, so your web services. Uh, you can monitor the output of Bistock Help Monitor. As you can see, there's so much more that uh, for which a monitor can be set up. Within Bistock servers and SQL servers, uh, you can monitor your Windows and T services, whether they are in the right state. You can monitor against your system resources. Uh, and your disks, uh, whether they are running out of uh, disk space. Uh, you can, again, also against your event logs and your NT services, it's all there. Uh, SQL servers, uh, yeah, again, that's pretty much the same as BizTalk servers. SQL server instances, that is about uh, the BizTalk, uh, sorry, BizTalk related uh, SQL server jobs. Uh, so for that, we take uh, this alarm because here everything has already been set up. This is that platform health alarm, and we consider those SQL jobs as part of the BizTalk platform. Hence, we have done the monitoring here in this alarm. Uh, so you can monitor uh, against the state uh, of that uh, of all those different uh, jobs, but also against uh, the last run state uh, of a of a job. So if you have uh, the BizTalk uh, backup job, uh, for example, uh, let's see here it is. Um, if it, uh, of course, it must be uh, running anyway uh, to have those backups uh, being taken. Uh, but you also want to be sure that the last run status was uh, successful. If, for example, um, uh, the disk where the backups are stored has run out of disk space, uh, well, that this backup job will fail. Uh, and yeah, you really want to know about it, right? So that's why it is also important to set up the monitoring against that uh, last run status. So all that monitoring is, uh, is is also there. And then indeed, yeah, you also have the server availability to check if the actual servers are yeah responding anyway, uh, if they can be pinged uh, or yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, well, again, that, that check is done via ping or via a short uh, turn session on port uh, uh, 25, just to be, just to understand if those ports are, if the server is indeed uh, responding. So that's about yeah all the monitoring. Uh, meanwhile, we have also covered um, 
well, um, partially, I'll do it a little bit, but no, not yet, actually. Um, the, the, the monitoring of, of actual endpoints, uh, so your, your file shares, your FTP sites, and your queues, uh, we already came across the monitoring of service bus queues and service bus topics. But as said, you can also monitor against your file locations. So for file locations, uh, like your file shares and your FTP sites, Best of 360 automatically uh, shows all the uh, ports that use those different adapters. And from that, it's uh, just a matter of uh, configuring the, the monitoring rules. Uh, so you can monitor uh, for file count, for example, and you can say, for example, okay, I want to receive a warning uh, when the file count in this path that is connected to this file location, uh, if that is, let's say, greater than or higher than, greater than or equal, sorry, uh, a high uh, hundreds, uh, 100 files. And that can be combined with additional rules, like also monitoring uh, the directory size. And then, of course, it will be in, let's say, and no, well, let's just say 10 megabytes. Uh, and again, besides the warning thresholds, you can also set up the monitoring in a similar way uh, yeah, for, for throwing errors. So that can also be done. This is how it works uh, for file shares and very similar also for FTP and, F, uh, and SFTP. Uh, but also for queue mechanisms, uh, you can just set up that monitoring. So we support MSMQ and IBM uh, MQ. In this case, you need to uh, configure those, uh, those servers here. So you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, but yeah, no, no queues are found here, uh, so I can't really show that. Uh, but the concept is pretty much the same. Uh, you can simply configure uh, that you want to monitor about how many messages are there in the active queue uh, that still must be picked up, either by BizTalk or maybe some downstream system. Uh, or you can even monitor uh, the dead letters queue. So if there are many dead letters, uh, well, messages may got expired for uh, whatever reason. Uh, so also for that, you can set up that, that monitoring. Yeah, so that's also uh, all there. Um, I think in a uh, pretty high overview, we have covered uh, most of the, of the areas here. Uh, and again, that's really about uh, well, monitoring the technical components uh, and also monitoring all the actual endpoints that are all belonging to the BizTalk environment. So clearly, BizTalk C60 is much more than just monitoring BizTalk server itself and everything that exists uh, within the BizTalk admin console, uh, but also uh, yeah, what's happening in the background, like in the SQL server, uh, but also uh, monitoring the actual endpoints uh, to where uh, this talk is connected, either on the receive side uh, or on the uh, outgoing side. Um, another category that we've uh, seen in the case studies is that people are looking for uh, monitoring the actual uh, transactions that are being processed. And that is something that can be found here on a data monitoring. So here, uh, you have different uh, data sources uh, for which you can set up that data monitoring. Um, uh, so again, this is really about all the process that is actually happening. So imagine that you have a batch of messages uh, that's being processed at a specific uh, fixed uh, day and hour, uh, let's say every uh, Wednesday uh, at noon, a batch, of, a batch of messages is expected via a specific uh, uh, receive location. Uh, and if that batch of messages is not arriving in BizTalk, uh, because maybe upstream uh, there something went wrong, uh, yeah, preventing those messages not being able to be processed by BizTalk, actually not even arriving in BizTalk, uh, that will be an, an interruption of your business process. Uh, and clearly you don't want it to happen. Uh, so for that, you can use this process monitoring. So when I take this alarm, um, 
we just go through the concept uh, here because for all the other data sources uh, it will be pretty much the same so we, we will only take uh, one or two of the uh, different uh, data sources uh, for uh, for now uh, so here of course you need to provide a name uh, a bit of a descriptive name about uh, what you're going to monitor and then you can also configure how many messages uh, you expect to be processed within a specific uh, time frame and uh, then you can configure at what port uh, do you want monitoring to take, to take place so at what receive location uh, or receive locations uh, do you expect uh, that batch of messages to be processed so you have the number of messages that you expect, you have uh, the location uh, from where uh, the messages must be processed, and then you can configure when you expect uh, the uh, those messages. Uh, so you have the, the how, ma how many, uh, you have the uh, yeah, from where, and you also have the frequency. Uh, here you have daily, you have all day, and there's also a frequency. So in this case, uh, there's a constant flow of messages that's being processed by this specific receive location and also by this specific send port uh, that must be monitored uh, because otherwise, uh, well, bad things might uh, might happen. Uh, and clearly, you can play with those uh, different uh, different settings. Um, if you only uh, want to monitor within specific business hours, uh, of course, that that can just be done. And that indeed helps uh, if you expect a, mess, a batch of messages to be processed uh, indeed uh, on Wednesday around noon. Uh, well, yeah, you can just uh, set it here. Uh, what is it? Uh, weekly. And then we will remove all this and we select uh, the Wednesday. And then we say, okay, from noon. Yeah, from noon on, uh, noon exactly, it is fine. Yeah, uh, to let's say oh, to one o'clock. Oh, sorry, one o'clock. Uh, and then yeah, so yeah, so like this, you can set set it up, and then uh, well, that that, that monitoring will uh, will happen. Um, yeah, like this. Now we have it, uh, and now Visual 360 uh, will start monitoring. Uh, well, the provided ports and at the configured time frame on Wednesday alone uh, if uh, more than 10 messages uh, are received and otherwise uh, you will receive notification. So this is how the process monitoring works. Another category, uh, I will skip this one, I won't save it, is message box query monitoring. And that can also be useful. Clearly, the source of monitoring is the message box. This one can also be useful if you want to automate the manual monitoring of suspended instance monitoring. It's just one of those tasks that is done just so frequently uh, by, uh, by business administrators, right? Uh, so why not automate it if you, if, that, if you have the tools anyway? Uh, so again, for that you can use that uh, message box uh, and data monitoring. Uh, clearly, we can give it a name as suspended interest monitoring. And you can do it very high level. So here we provide a query, all in progress service instances. And the instance status must be equal to uh, suspended resumable. So that is uh, yeah, very uh, generic. Uh, really, all the suspended instances uh, that are resumable uh, yeah, will be found uh, by BISTOS 360. But of course, you can also make it much more uh, specific uh, by adding more filters, like maybe providing the name of the BISTOS application, uh, or maybe providing uh, a specific uh, service name. So uh, yeah, that can all just be done. Uh, so all the flexibility is there. It can be done uh, pretty gener generic, but it can also be done very specific. Uh, for the rest, the configuration is pretty much the same. I'll come to this in a second. Uh, with respect to setting the thresholds and also uh, the, the monitoring, that's all pretty much the same. In this case, you probably really want to uh, have it done with a specific frequently, right? So you are really able uh, to be aware uh, when those suspended instances 
uh, are actually happening uh, without you having, having to, to do it manually. And then uh, we have that operational uh, automation uh, by means of this uh, set actions uh, section uh, that can automate uh, yeah, resuming, sus even suspending or terminating uh, those, uh, those service instances that were found based on this query. So if there are suspended instances uh, found that can be easily resumed automatically, well, that's how it, that can be configured here, um, simply by turning on this uh, checkbox and then say, indeed, uh, oh, what to action was this? Okay. Uh, the what to action is indeed, yeah, resuming uh, those, uh, those surface instances. And if it doesn't work, uh, there's also that uh, retry mechanism. Likewise, if you have many uh, routing failure reports, uh, you can also have them uh, being uh, cleaned up automatically uh, by using the terminate uh, feature. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's also there. So that's really about all the uh, yeah, processing that is, that, is ha that is happening throughout your environment. And as you can see, there are other data sources for which you can also set up that, uh, that monitoring. Um, and also with respect, another one that we've seen a couple of times about uh, the uh, having some automating, uh, automation happening to, to handle the environment. Uh, and we have seen a couple of those features already. Uh, we have seen the autocorrect with respect to the, to the BizTalk ports, for example, or with your Windows NT services and your SQL jobs. Uh, whenever they get in an, uh, in a not started state, BISTOR 360 will be able to get them back to the expected state. Uh, and also, um, we have the operational automation that we've just seen uh, under, the, under the message box that helps in automatically resuming uh, or terminating service instances that's there. And the last one that we have that can be found here under environment and that administration, we have to automate the tasks. Uh, so you can create automated tasks that also help uh, to perform uh, some automated actions uh, based on a schedule. Uh, well, for that, you can find different uh, components uh, for which you can have that automation uh, happening. Um, yeah, uh, so, so all in all, there's, there's, there's a lot uh, that you can use in, in Bistro 360 uh, that helps uh, making the day-to-day -day work uh, for the Bistro administration team much uh, much easier and i think uh, i will uh, wrap up uh, here and uh, go back to the slides and uh, give it back to uh, megala yeah thank you Liz. Uh, that was pretty much like you have covered the, all the highlights and the, the important capabilities of the stock 360 hope uh, know the people will get uh, to know about uh, how to know about uh, the capabilities of this 360 so now uh, like uh, team uh, now uh, we can see like what is the impact of long time so if you don't have let's assume like if you don't have the stock server so the uh, any monitoring tool in place and also um, you know you don't have proper uh, uh, facility to uh, to uh, understand and uh, troubleshoot the issues on time then what will happen in the business so downtime is a costly and uh, disruptive event uh, that business need to address seriously isn't it when you are a small startup or a large enterprise the potential cost can be substantial uh, let's uh, let's take a closer look at some of these impacts so one of the major consequences of uh, downtime is to lost revenue uh, when your system are down and your business is unable to generate sales and complete transactions uh, this directly affects your bottom line isn't it and you can can result in significant financial losses at times so downtime also has a deter, uh, detrimental effect on productivity uh, when critical systems are unavailable and employees are unable to perform their tasks efficiently causing delays and inefficiencies in workforce uh, this leads to waste time and resources ultimately impacting the overall productivity of the business and another critical impact of downtime is on customer satisfaction 
fraction so that's the main thing for any business isn't it when your services are unavailable customer experience frustration and disappointment this can damage your relationship with them and you know the trust in the business basically and also uh, downtime can have long term effects on your business uh, at some cases especially in terms of reputation when customer experience frequent or extended periods of downtime uh, the brand image can be tarnished and negative reviews and word of mouth can spread make, making it harder to attract and retain customers in the future uh lastly you know downtime increases the risk of customer churn if your services are unreliable and prone to frequent outages uh customer may seek alternatives and switch to your competitors so losing customers not only impact immediate revenue but also create challenges in rebuilding your customer base so in this slide uh, you can see like uh, so go back to the previous one lex oh, uh, you can see like uh, when downtime happens so what is the impact in each and every area of the business uh, so you know pr pretty much everywhere the impact is happening in your business so that is what has been uh, showcased in that uh, slide and the next slide uh, lex in conclusion uh, you know employing a perfect monitoring solution like bestock 360 brings you significant cost reduction benefits of businesses and it reduces staffing cost minimizes uh, the downtime and uh, leads to overall cost uh, saving now we will be uh, taking a look at uh, you know so what is the latest fee latest uh, version of bestock 360 and what are all the uh, what are uh, uh, new features we have included the uh, included in that release so our latest version of bestock 360 is 10.6 and these four major features we have incorporated in that release uh, with the first one ias website and app pool operations you can uh, gain comprehensive control over your ias servers enabling you to perform machinery operations effortlessly you can perform various operations on your ias websites um, uh, and whether you need to start stop or restart a website all these operations can be easily executed within the stock 360 interface and with the second capability export and import eda parties and agreements you know eda is not a new capability in the stock 360 so that has already has been implemented but like in case if you have got multiple environments uh, like production non production in your business and uh, if you have employed the stock 360 already then the configurations uh, which you have made in your non production environment easily can be exported and imported to your production uh, when you when you have the live uh, go live uh, go live and also the third one you know that is uh, the troubleshooting uh, capability we have implemented so bestock 360 will be is capturing the activities of the monitoring and analytic services uh, for the different log levels so that would help you like if anything happens any exception appears and uh, you wanted to troubleshoot it then those logs will be a uh, insight for you and also we have introduced a new feature called the sql query which allows you which allows users to monitor the results of secure sql queries and it provides a streamlined and efficient way to keep track of critical data and make informed decisions based on your monitored results so these are all the uh, four capabilities we have implemented in our latest version so over to you lex yes uh well yeah we're coming uh, close to the end of the of the webinar um uh, well yeah we've shown you uh, the capabilities of uh, of this or c60 uh, with a special focus on a couple of uh, lines of industries. Um, if you are uh, not yet using Bistro 360 and you would be interested to have a look at it, uh, we are always happy uh, to have a conversation with you. Uh, first off, just to start understanding your actual chances and see if uh, Bistro 360 uh, would be able to address those uh, those challenges. Uh, so for that, uh, you also provide a, a free trial uh, that you can uh, that you can use, and where we will also support you in help setting up the product uh, again, just to make clear, uh, yeah, to understand uh, if. Uh, Bistro 360 does uh, address your uh, your challenges, so you can always uh, yeah check uh, that uh, that website, and uh, we can have that kind of uh, of conversations.
Uh, next, uh, we have a set of, uh, of resources uh, for the blogs. Uh, we have a blog website. There, uh, we mainly uh, yeah, write about how you can actually use a product uh, from a, a customer perspective. And we have also uh, plenty of uh, tips from uh, external speakers like uh, Senor Pereira about uh, also really about a, a biz talk. We have a bunch of uh, white papers and uh, and ebooks uh, also deal about, for example, the installation of a uh, uh, biz talk server in the different uh, versions, uh, but also uh, yeah, much other stuff. We have a YouTube channel uh, where you can find much more videos. And we have a separate blog uh, landing page actually about uh, all kinds of different biz talk server uh, 2020 uh, related uh, articles. Uh, of course, uh, we have also uh, the BizTalk uh, migration book uh, uh, for purchase. Uh, so if you are uh, going to migrate from a lower version to BizTalk Server uh, 2020, uh, this book has a lot of hints about why uh, should you uh, upgrade and uh, what uh, upgrade path uh, would you take? Uh, would it be a big bang? Uh, would it be a side by side? Or maybe even if you are considering uh, migration to, to, to Azure, uh, well, the book gives, uh, gives several hints. Uh, so in detail, again, that book is also available. Uh, next, we always value you your feedback. Uh, we are always happy to hear from you. Uh, and we have multiple uh, different channels. Uh, well, yeah, how we reach out uh, to you and how you can reach out uh, to us. Uh, so uh, if there's any message you want to share, uh, well, yeah, just uh, please reach out to us and we can, we can have the conversation. Thank you for joining this uh, this uh, webinar, everybody. You take care. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Covey.com.